once again. My name is Nyasha Chakuma Makoni. In this video, I'll be taking you through the overview of the auditing process. The auditing process is supported by frameworks and these frameworks enable the auditor to conclude appropriately and that is to express an appropriate audit opinion. The first framework that supports the auditing process is the Companies Act of Zimbabwe. The Companies Act governs how the auditors are engaged. It also governs certain transactions that the company is that the company takes part takes part in. Then we've got the Code of Corporate Governance, which is the King Four Code. And for the purposes of your CTA, we'll also be taking you through the ZIM code. The code of corporate governance stipulates how an entity is supposed to conduct itself. That is how they're supposed to take to conduct their business in an ethical manner. Then we've got the code of professional conduct. This mainly governs the chartered accountants who will be your auditing firm as well as any other chartered accountant that might be in the client firm. The first activities that you conduct in your, uh, during your audit are your engagement activities. During the engagement activities, we've got pre-engagement activities which are probably understanding the client before you take them on. What is the client about? What is their reputation? Would you want to be associated with such a client? Would the client be able to pay your auditing fees? And if you, uh, if you are happy with conducting business with the client and auditing them, then you do so by signing an engagement letter. Once you've signed the engagement letter, then you can start planning for the audit. And in your planning, the planning phase includes planning how many resources you need, when you'll be conducting the audit, when will it start, when will it end, how many branches, for example, will you need to visit, and when you'll be able to go and visit those. What type of resources do you need? Do you need computer-assisted auditing techniques? Do you need auditing team members with certain skills or certain capabilities? During planning, you also determine if you need an expert or if you've been using the work of an expert. This could be your auditor's expert or management's expert. Once you've finished planning, you get into the audit and you obtain audit evidence. Now the ISA audit is a risk-based audit. And all through these activities that we've discussed thus far, which is your engagement activities, your planning activities, and even at the obtaining evidence stage, you need to always be assessing risk and you need to always be responding to the risks that you've identified. At audit evidence gathering, this is when you actually do the actual evidence gathering to support your conclusion. Once you've gathered the evidence, you'll need to evaluate the evidence. And when you've evaluated the evidence, is it enough? So that is to say, was it adequate? Have you managed to obtain sufficient evidence? Is the evidence appropriate for you to ex express an appropriate audit opinion? This is the stage at which you're concluding on your evaluated, gathered evidence. And lastly, you will then conclude by reporting. So the manner in which we're going to be teaching you will go through the flow of the audit process. A 
as I said earlier, in class we will actually discuss what a risk-based audit is. That an ISA audit is a risk-based audit. And for the purposes of your CTA program, we will be teaching you how to go through the ISA audit or how to conduct an ISA audit. We will also be discussing the concept of reasonable assurance as we say that the auditor can only obtain reasonable assurance. They cannot obtain absolute assurance because remember the auditor actually uses sampling in their audit. So whatever it is that they're going to gather in terms of audit evidence, it can only permit them to give a reasonable assurance and that is the highest level of assurance that the auditor can actually express. You will find that there is an interrelation of, between your auditing process with all your other courses. That is to say your financial reporting, your management accounting and finance, as well as your taxation. How is this so? You'll find that when the auditor goes into audit, they actually audit financial reporting transactions. Whatever it is that you'll have accounted for in the financial accounting section, that is what the auditor goes to audit. If it's property, plant and equipment, the auditor is going to audit whether you've actually used the correct framework. In this case, which is your IAS 16, have you accounted for your IAS 16, which is your property, plant and equipment, in accordance with the framework? And that framework is IAS 16. In management accounting and finance, the auditor might actually also have to go into audit on some of your activities that you will have conducted. For example, as part of understanding your entity, the, the auditor will also need to understand your, your strategies, the firm's strategies. This is covered in management accounting and finance. The auditor will also need to understand probably your key ratios as a firm. And this is also covered in management, accounting, and finance. As you're transacting, taxation is, is brought about. And the auditor will also go and audit your taxation. Have you complied with the taxation laws? For example, where you're supposed to pay VAT, have you correctly calculated your VAT? And have you then prepared those returns for VAT as would have been prescribed by your audit, as would have been prescribed by your taxation. As part of your conclusion, you will find that the audit opinion will be key. You will need to express an audit opinion. And this is a statement that is actually issued by you as the, you, the auditor, who is a professional accountant, to say uh, this is whether or not the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatements due to fraud or error, or whether the financial statements have been prepared in all material respects in accordance with an applicable financial reporting framework. So by that, we mean that the auditor cannot go into audit when you have not used a particular framework. So for the purposes of your CTA, your framework will be your IFRS. And so the ISAs are there to audit the IFRS. There are different types of engagements that can be performed by an auditor. For example, we've got the audit of historical financial statements. This is your normal audit where the auditor goes in to audit the company's financial statements at the end of the reporting period. We've got review, reviews, and it means that the, the level of assurance might differ 
based on the type of engagement. If the level of assurance is going to differ based on the level the engage the level of if the level of assurance is going to differ based on the engagement, it means that the amount of work or the nature of work that will be conducted by the auditor is going to differ. We've also got the agreed upon procedures and the compilation engagement. All these will be covered during the CTA course. We look forward to seeing you in class to go through the whole auditing process as well as the engagements that can be performed by the auditor. Thank you for having me.